Hello everyone, I'm Nicole Feiss. I'm an instructor in the philosophy department here at Trent University. Uh, fun fact, I'm also an alumni of the philosophy department here at Trent. So I'm very pleased to be making these videos for you. I'm hoping to give you some tips on how to approach reading philosophy um, in the class that you're taking here at Trent. So reading philosophy can sometimes seem like a very difficult or daunting task. Um, but just like getting good at a craft or at a sport, reading philosophy is a skill that just takes time to develop and it takes a lot of practice. Um, and note that there are some different areas of philosophy, so some of the skills that you might need to, say, read history or read contemporary ethics. Um, the skills might be a little different, but in this video, we're going to be giving you some general tips that you can use to approach your readings in your philosophy class here at Trent. So the goal of this video in the Philosophy Fundamentals series is to provide you with some practical tips on how to read effectively and efficiently. So these tips are organized in the following way. So first, we'll go over some tips um, for what you might do before you actually get started reading. Second, we'll go into more detail about techniques that you can use as you're reading philosophy. And then finally, we'll go over some things that you might do um, after you've completed the reading to really synthesize the information that you've just learned. So these before, during, and after steps are all important ones for the task of reading philosophy. So first, let's go over some tips that you can use before you even open up your reading. Um, and these are important tips to keep in mind as you're starting to read, not just in philosophy, but I think these apply to any of your classes. So first, know that reading takes time, especially when those readings are fairly dense or when we're new to philosophy as a discipline. So don't underestimate the readings and the time it will take to complete them for your philosophy classes and for all of your classes. Because reading takes time, it's important to plan ahead when you're thinking about your reading and class schedule. So think about creating a weekly schedule for yourself um, with chunks of time set aside every day to work on the readings that you have for all of your classes and try to aim to set aside at least a couple of hours each week for each class. A second tip is to review the course syllabus or reading list. So the syllabus for all of your courses should be a go-to resource for you, as it contains not only the information that you would need to contact your instructor, um, but it will also give you hints as to what the topics are each week. So it will also clarify the overall learning goals for your class, which might be helpful for you to keep in mind as you're approaching the readings as well. So just make sure you've taken a look at the syllabus each week before you approach the readings assigned. The next tip is to just take care of yourself. This is a really simple tip, but it's often overlooked. So make sure that you've gotten enough sleep, that you have had a good breakfast, lunch, dinner, um, that you're in a comfortable location, um, and there are uh, these are important for ensuring that you can fo actually focus on the reading um, as you sit down to complete them. The next tip is to establish for yourself good study habits. So there's lots of empirical research on learning um, as to what kinds of reading habits are best for studying and reading in university. Here are some research-based suggestions for how to approach reading. So know where you're best able to focus. So some people might require absolute silence. I'm one of those people. Um, but others might need some kind of background noise um, as they're completing um, reading or when they're studying. So decide, decide what study environment works best for you um, and what best suits your ability to focus on the reading task. However, do try to eliminate distractions. So you should turn your phone off or put it on silent, put it away, um, and refrain from checking social media during your reading sessions. Um, but do give yourself short breaks to do those things and give yourself a little bit of a break. 
Another tip is that research shows that multitasking doesn't actually improve learning or the retainment of information. So don't watch TV or listen to podcasts as you're reading for any of your courses. Um, again, you can plan ahead and set out some time to take breaks um, to do those things to keep yourself engaged. The next tip is to clarify the goals and expectations for the reading. Um, when you're reading philosophy, the main thing that you're looking for is an argument or reasons or the author's main conclusion. An argument or an understanding of a person's argument is what will be the focal point of the philosophical text that you're reading or the textbook. So again, you might check the learning outcomes for the class overall, as indicated in your course syllabus, to clarify what the expectations are for you. In almost all of your classes in philosophy, the expectation will be that you come to class prepared um, and having already completed the reading. And this is important for two reasons. First, coming to class having read the reading, will allow you to solidify your understanding of that reading. You can also um, ask questions and participate in your class. That's the second reason why it's important to complete all of the readings ahead of time. It allows you to reflect on your ideas and ask your professor um, to clarify anything that you might not have understood as you were reading and studying prior to coming to class. And a final suggestion is just to talk with friends and other people about the subject matter that you're reading about. Um, talking to friends, classmates, your professors, your family about the subject matter of your class um, can get you engaged and excited about learning. Um, and often in philosophy, the ideas that we're talking about are relevant and really interesting. So that should be, I hope, easy to do. Okay, so those are some tips on how to prepare to read um, in philosophy. So let's get into some suggestions on how you might actually do it, how you might actually read philosophy. So we'll consider a three-part process for reading in philosophy. So each one of these imp is important, so let's break down each of them. So first up is what we might call the pre-read. The goal of the pre-read is to examine the general features of the article or the text that you're reading for that week. Um, you're not actually reading just yet, you're actually really just skimming the major parts of the article um, at this stage. So some strategies for pre-reading include just reading through the introduction or the abstract of the article if it has one, the abstract or the introduction or even just the first few um, sentences or paragraph of a text will usually tell you important information about the reading, including the thesis, the focus of the article, and the structure of the author's argument. Um, if you're reading a textbook, the pre-read might help you identify um, what the philosopher the chapter is discussing or who that philosopher is. So another tip is to read the section headings in the article. So often articles will be broken up into different sections with different headings, and each section will usually um, have a particular aim or purpose. Maybe one section is to give you some background information, another section is to develop the author's argument, um, the last section could be to consider objections and the author's response. So in the pre-read, just skim through the titles of those sections. Also, try to assess what the topic of the paper or the chapter is. Usually, you can tell from the first couple of sentences or paragraphs what the author is trying to talk about. Having a sense of the topic will help you understand the overall issue that the author or the philosopher is interested in addressing. So you might look for sentences that start with the phrase, I will discuss, my main concern is, um, I am interested in, and so on. Those are some key phrases you can look out for as you're reading um, in philosophy specifically. Another suggestion is to try to pick out the author's thesis statement in the pre-read. So a thesis statement communicates the author's main point and the, object uh, the objective of what they're trying to argue. 
So a thesis statement usually begins with one of the following phrases. Um, in this paper, I will argue that, um, I conclude, I will show that, and so on. Sometimes a thesis might not be clear right away, um, but that's okay. In the pre-read, you can try to find it. If it's there right away, that's great. If not, you can always come back to that, but flag that for yourself initially. The pre-read doesn't need to take very long. It could really only take five minutes because you're just reading some of the major um, sections of an article, including the introduction and section headings. But overall, the pre-read is important for a few reasons. So first of all, it allows you to get a sense of what the author is talking about, what they're going to argue, and finally, it gives you a rough idea of the structure of the paper. So the next step is the speed read. So the goal of the speed read is to develop a really basic understanding of the text or article, as well as the conclusions and the premises of the argument that the author is giving. So some strategies for speed reading include reading the whole article fairly quickly. The goal here is to just make progress through the entire article. Try not to get too bogged down in the details yet. Um, we'll come back to that in a second. So double check here that you've correctly identified what you think the thesis is of the article. So if the thesis isn't immediately clear to you, try to rephrase what you think the author is arguing um, in the paper in your own words. And then that's an opportunity for you to ask and clarify with your professor and your peers what the thesis actually is. In the speed read, do flag and look up words that you might not know right away. Um, but don't get too bogged down in this. You don't have to go off and do any intensive research. Just try to clarify for yourself some things that might seem unclear. You can also underline, highlight, or otherwise flag keywords. So you should flag keywords, ideas, theses, premises, conclusions, and so on. Um, if you're confused by something here as well, you might flag that so you can return to it or maybe bring it up in class to clarify. So a suggestion here is to flag some key words or key parts of the structure of the paper and argument overall. So look for words like first, second, third, or on the one hand and on the other hand, or phrases or words like because, since, it follows that, if then, given, um, the reason is, and so on. These often indicate a really important point that the author is trying to make um, and communicate to you as the reader, so it's important to flag those things. The speed read will take a little more time than the pre-read, but overall aim to spend about maybe 20 minutes doing this. Again, you're just skimming very quickly to further develop um, your basic understanding of the article. So the final step is a more careful read. So the careful, uh, sorry, the goal of the careful read is to develop a fuller understanding of the text or the article that you're reading. Here you will read the paper entirely and pay attention to the details of the philosopher's argument. So some strategies here might include taking more detailed notes. So add to the things that you've previously flagged or highlighted and double check to to make sure that you've understood what the author is trying to say. Here, one research-based suggestion is to try to rephrase what the author is saying in your own words. So try not to just copy the text verbatim in your notes. This isn't an efficient or an effective way to take notes while you're reading. So again, try to explain things in your own words, which actually reinforces your learning and understanding of a text and argument. So another tip is to identify whether or not the author considers any objections. If they do, you should also take note of what their response to that objection is. You might also add questions that you might want to actually bring with you to class. So if something is unclear or confusing, flag that and raise it in class, or even go to your professor's office hours and ask them if they could clarify the point that the author is trying to make. 
you should summarize the overall argument after the careful read in your own words. You might also want to draw diagrams here that could map out the structure or the argument that the philosopher has just given um, if you're a more visual learner. But overall, just try to summarize what the main argument was in the paper. The careful read is important because it will give you a much firmer grasp of the argument that the philosopher is giving. So after completing the pre-read, the speed read, and the careful read of the article or text that you're um, considering or reading, you should summarize the author's arguments in your own words, as I suggested. And after doing that careful read, um, with that summary or that map of the argument, you should use this to begin to reflect on what your own original ideas are in relation to the article. So the next step as philosophy students, after you've completed actually reading a text, is to evaluate the article and develop your own ideas or understanding on what the article or the philosopher is actually trying to argue. So you might consider some of the following questions to prompt your evaluation of the argument or the text. You might ask yourself, do you agree or disagree with the author's thesis? Um, give some reasons for why you agree or disagree. If you agree, think about why it's compelling to you. Um, can you think of further ways to strengthen that argument that the philosopher has given? If you disagree, maybe try to jot down some reasons for why you disagree with the author. There you might think of some examples or situations that apply to the argument or maybe push back against it as well. So you could consider whether there might be counterexamples to the philosopher's um, argument that they've given. So focus on identifying your own beliefs and ideas about the article now. So in doing so, you might have to reread some of the passages that were particularly interesting or particularly relevant to the philosopher's argument. Um, and you can go back and review the parts that you flagged in the pre-read, the speed read, and the careful read. So part of doing philosophy is about considering the arguments of others and evaluating what your own position is um, on the subject matter in order to reflect on what your own ideas and beliefs are. I think that's a really nice thing about philosophy. It allows you and gives you space to consider what your own ideas are. So that's the kind of last step of reading philosophy before you come to class, is to really start to think, uh, think about what your ideas are in relation to a text so that you can come to class um, excited and prepared to talk about the ideas that you've learned. So uh, these are some citations and additional resources that you might look at, um, but overall I think, or I hope that this video has been helpful for you in picking up some tips on how to read philosophy in your philosophy classes.